Road layouts, functionality, inspiration. Today's video is all about roads and the system that you design in your city. Lately, I've been spending a lot of time exploring realism in city skylines. So the past, uh, this is the, the third video in what's becoming a, a bit of a collection. Uh, the first video was about what a realistic city start might look like and how the map can, uh, can influence that. The second video was actually about how to use buildings in a way to create a mixed use district for a, a realistic walkable city area. That brings us to today. My goal for today is to create an impromptu but inspired road layout in a different area on the same map of Little River that we've been exploring. Last time we looked at Portsmouth, New Hampshire and talked about the history of that and when it was built and how that influenced the, the size of the blocks that were created in the road layout. Today I want to take that information and just turn it into a, a road layout in a different area. Um, I'm, I'm kind of going to make it up as I go along, but we'll see how the, uh, the influence of Portsmouth affects the build. Everyone, thank you for being here. Let's build a road layout. Here is my current progress on the map Little River. So this is the starting area. I'm calling this Lancaster. Now you can see the road layout is uh, fairly organic, and that's really kind of a prototype of what we're about to work on today. Zooming out a little further, you can see that this is, um, we have a good rail connection for Lancaster. There is a major route going through the area, um, surrounded by a major, major route. This is the highway for all intents and purposes. This is the, the main traffic bypass for this area. Uh, this road would be access to the area. The new layout that we're about to implement is just upstream, still on the river. So you can imagine there's probably a bit of industry. There's probably um, reason to go back and forth between the two. You can live in one town, work in the other, what have you. Or, or back in the day, they probably would have lived and worked in their local area, uh, pre-automobile maybe even pre-trained for this. But yeah, this is where the next development is going to go. I'm calling this one Jefferson, for lack of a, a better name. I'm, I'm naming it after towns from my area. So we've got Lancaster. This is about to become Jefferson. Jefferson will have a good train connection, has great access to the highway system right there. The What is a bit of a sort of bypass to this area is going to be a main road in this area. And no doubt we'll also have some connections to this island too. As I look at this spot, the island is actually a focal point of the whole thing and how people are going to get to the island is, a, uh, is an important consideration. So let's assume that the modern roads formed around where the bridges were built in the past. So with that in mind, I'm gonna start with two bridges, two connections to this island. Um, clearly this is, this road probably continues down maybe even to this bridge over here. Uh, and the reason that I'm picking this spot is because it looks like it wants a bridge. Almost as much as this spot. This is like the original bridge would have gone here because this is the closest, or um, rather the shortest span. Shortest span, shallowest water. Like you can see the deep part there. Uh, so let's do this one first. And the, the places that roads come from and go are a real good way to inform the, the layout overall. So that's that's where I like to start. Start with bridges, start start thinking practically. Where did places connect? Where did uh, original, original uh, I wanna say city planners, but there weren't necessarily city planners back in the day, or they certainly weren't called that. But bridges are expensive, and where they go would certainly influence all of the other decisions made uh, in a given town. Now I think this one's pretty inspiring. It's not gonna connect over here, because that's for this one. So I'll have to figure out how that connects, which is fine. Uh, this would probably be direct access to the train station to get goods and services and people and whatever's on the island. Haven't decided that yet, really. <laughs> but uh, certainly, this is gonna be grounded. Let's ground this. Certainly, uh, this road connects up here and is probably access to a train station at some point. So that makes sense to me. Now this one, I'm gonna have it sort of meander, meander up the way and curve back towards this. There we go. That's pretty decent. I don't know why it curves like that just yet, but it doesn't really matter. 
What I'll probably end up doing actually, I'm a big fan of as we connect areas, have the, have the roads straighten out sometimes. I'll show you what I mean. But in a grid, you'll see that uh, sometimes curved roads become straight over time, or by the time they're paved, they've, uh, they've been sort of redefined. So let's, let's connect this to the other road. Let's assume that there's like a waterfront uh, drive here of some sort. Get that installed. Do this one next. Like I said before, just off the cuff, just kind of making it, making it all uh, make sense. Just about there. I'll probably have all these go to ground as well. I don't really want this to be elevated when compared to other roads that are that are uh, at the ground level. So I'm going to take move it here, uh, select this group of nodes and just send them to terrain height, I think. Even if that's even if it's slightly lower, it's okay. I just want it to be terrain height. Doesn't matter. And one of the connections came out a little weird, so I'm going to use move it and we'll see if we can get a good curve out of that. And we can't. Yes, we can. There it is. Nice. So there's our meandering waterfront drive. Now let's imagine, certainly there's there's a development that happened within this, and in keeping with Portsmouth, as we spoke about in the previous video, I would love to have this um, be a smaller grid. In fact, here, let's start up here, and let's, let's say that there is a commons, let's say that there's a, a common area for, for all of this. When I say commons, I mean a spot for animals to graze, generally, right? So a grass patch where no buildings were built. And it probably resembles the next road next to it here. So let's do this. Let's loosely follow the previous road. I'm actually going to turn off. Turning off snapping is very, very helpful for this kind of thing. Because you really don't want to snap too much if you want the road layout to be uh, more organic. So this rectangle here will be our commons. There we go. It is decided. I've got a very large one over here, a very large park in the middle that that serves the same purpose in Lancaster that this somewhat smaller uh, square, somewhat smaller rectangle will serve in Jefferson. Let's keep filling in the layout here. And it is going to be gridded in a big way, but gridded very... Uh, loosely. It's always the idea. So we're going to go for more organic looking stuff. Because of that, I'm using the freeform road tool rather than uh, more uh, down here, the third option, freeform road tool, because I don't want to be too, too strict about the whole thing. Now, let's see. Maybe there's a road that serves this kind of diagonally, just to add some interest and intrigue. For no reason in particular, other than I, I kind of want to. Because otherwise, if I continue this trend that we've got, it's going to turn out to be a not so interesting layout. So this one meanders up and forms the next sort of block here. I'm going to use a straight road for this. There we go. Nice. Like maybe this is, a, is sort of an access to this area. So let's make that connection. There we go. That's interesting. And then let's do the next uh, the next row of, of buildings along here. Or let, let's imagine the next row of buildings, which means that we need a, a road. Buildings and city skylines will always require a uh, road access because they need services to come through, right? So that's what I'm keeping in mind here. You really, there, there's no good way to, to build without a road connection in city skylines, unless you make the, the building non-functional, but then... Then what's the point? Ooh, maybe that's the commons. I don't know. Let's do the layout, and it's it's somewhere between historic and me making it up, and I'm I'm happy with all of that. That's what I want right there. So we'll turn on anarchy to get that connection. That probably added a node in a place I don't want it. Yep, that node right there. So I'm actually just going to use. Um, now nah, we'll we'll replace it entirely freeform road tool to get that nice 
Good stuff. Good stuff. Keep at it. I almost want the grid to get smaller as it reaches this lowest point. So let's start down here and we'll, we'll start with uh, this connection here. And I'm going to use a straight road across this. Yep, smaller, smaller grid going across this. Straight road, straight road. Just to there. Beautiful. Now another set. Eventually we'll have to integrate like these two areas. We'll have to figure out how they connect. Happy with that. The result is going to be much more satisfying than just a regular like measured out grid, if that makes sense. And I'm totally disregarding the zoning squares as this, this city is going to be entirely hand placed. As far as I know currently, I believe it will be entirely hand placed because the result is just so much nicer. Now these two roads look like they come to a point and this looks like it also connects. Interesting, okay. Like I said, we'll have to integrate this grid into this area. This probably connects somehow. Maybe they uh, culminate at a statue or something like that. Maybe there's a turnaround. So here's how that came out. I'm not sure exactly what's going on yet, but it feels like this is probably a statue or a monument of some sort uh, in keeping with my New England the region of the U.S., New England, in keeping with that vibe, this would probably be a statue or a monument. Uh, this could be anything, really. This could be additional green space. Could also be shopping. I don't know. Um, I also moved this connection. So in keeping with road hierarchy, I want there to be fewer connections to this more major route here. This may change as well. In fact, here, let's, let's get rid of that. Um, this may serve a different purpose moving forward. But I don't want too many connections, too much access to your main kind of through road, or this will certainly be a main connection between our original settlement here and this new area. Too many connections leads to traffic problems. Uh, in keeping with road hierarchy, I really don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to have half as many connections to this road as I do to these more local roads. Now let's see where this one goes. There may even be a, a more central here. Let's do this. Yeah. Yep, that feels right. Still, freeform road tool. Freeform road tool, I'm not really relying on snapping and I'm definitely ignoring the grid. The grid is, is not my problem. <laughs> it's not, I, I'm not worried about the grid at all, in fact. So what I see here, so I said every other, so maybe this one connects to the main road too. That's cool. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is the next connection right here. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. This is even probably too many connections. Like what I should really do is only this one, but then we've got these big blocks and I, I don't want the blocks to be too big either. So it's it's mediating these few ideas that I'm trying to to keep going. I'm trying to... I want to have a motif throughout the whole thing. I want there to be like kind of a common thread holding it all together. Hope you're enjoying the stream of consciousness uh, <laughs> play by play that I'm that I'm doing here. I'm having fun, you know. Wiggle wiggle. <laughs> all right. It's a serious game, all right? There's serious consequences. These are real fake people that I'm building the city for, so. Hmm. I'm loving the grid size here. This is small, similar to these. I'm, I'm trying to keep the grid small in many places. It's about to get even smaller, I figure. And also sort of converging like this area. So these are moving closer and closer together. How is that going to affect everything else. I'm on pins and needles. Uh, let's straighten out this road. So what I was talking about earlier with straightening, straightening out segments, I know that like this road, we built it curved initially, but over time, what really tends to happen 
In fact, I'll show you on these two roads. So I'm taking move it and I'm using it on the segments. What tends to happen over time is this. Not guaranteed, it's not a rule and it's not like, you don't have to, you don't have to do it. You can keep things curved, curvy swervy is cool too, but things tend to simplify over time. And when the company goes to pave the roads, by that time, the curves have often been sorted out to their path of, of to their closest point, <laughs> excuse me, the, the shortest path between two points, which tends to be a straight line. So you tend to end up with this. Now, I don't think that's taking the intrigue out of the whole thing. I think it's still an interesting layout, and I would have had to build those curves to know where those points are initially, just as the probably farm animals and such were meandering through and forming paths and people were building on those paths. It's a big joke that Boston was formed largely by uh, the animals walking around on it, right? So another sort of original U.S. colony type situation. But over time, those paths tend to simplify, not as a rule. Like this one, I'm going to leave it curved because that's that's very, very nice. Um, let's have these two. And in fact, let's leave this open. Let's leave this space open and I'm not going to continue those two roads. This one almost certainly, like this major road, almost certainly straightened out over time. But remember, I would have had to build build it curved initially to see how it to see how it uh, would become in the future. I'm going to leave the roads along the river curved because that that curve never changed or or changed minimally, I suppose. I'm going to leave this one curved too. But yeah, I think that adds to the interest. Some roads straightened out over time. Some stayed stayed curvy, swervy more so. Uh, let's do let's cut this one in half because I think that that is too large for my tastes. Yep, that's good. So now I'm considering the years where the train station was built and how that how that all occurred. And what I want to do first is build a road. You have to, obviously we're building a lot of roads. You have to build a road to place the train station on. So I want to go about six units away here. Just sort of making this up. Yeah, it sounds good. I just know the train station, I've worked with this one before and I know it's about a six unit gap so if we measure it out it'll it'll come out nicely and I'm actually gonna swap out the train station track for the oh geez there we go yep so that those have the uh, the wires that we want that match the rest of the network cool so this would connect uh, the train tracks will connect in the way that they do just however we however we decide <laughs> I'm gonna borrow from this actually let's borrow from this and I'm gonna go about a train length, about a train length in, in one direction. How far did I go on the other one actually? Oh, you know what? This one has a bypass. Ah, okay, that's so choice. Well, this one isn't gonna have that. This is a, supposed to be a smaller area. I don't know if it's gonna turn out to be smaller at all, but uh, let's make up an amount. 24 units on either side. Sounds great to me. So we're gonna go over 24. And let's pick an amount to reconnect it to the main line. I'm also going to turn off the curved, the curving thing. There's something about the default curve of the game that I really don't like. So I'm turning that off in Fine Road uh, Tools. Much better. So I'll do that with Anarchy. Let's pick an amount so we can replicate it on both sides. Maybe it's 5 units, 40 meters on the measurements. Yep. Looks nice. Same thing here. Five units, 40 meters. Yep. Very smooth or smooth enough for my purposes. Certainly smooth enough for city skylines. Uh, so this has at grade crossings for people to walk across to get to the other platform. But what I can do now is include this in my train setup. I didn't know we were doing trains today, but we, uh, we are. So check it. Check it out. The reason I did a bypass is so intercity trains and just dummy train traffic or cargo trains can go on the other side. I'm totally happy with that. So this this path. But you'll notice I already have a line set up. There's lines going through this station. And those 
to zoom out for context, those go to the edge of the map. So this is how I'm allowing uh, people into my city. The Amtrak train stops. That's That looks like dummy traffic to me because the real train that actually picks people up that I'm using as an inner city train uses this side. Yep, so that one's going to disappear. There are real trains that treat this as a station. Many of you may or may not know, I didn't know, that this is a train station track that is the train spawn. So what I want to do is we're actually just going to add to the line this line here. I'm just going to drag it over. So now it can also stop in, uh, in Jefferson here. Solidifying the connectivity between the two places. So now this yellow line, there's a separate line. There's a kind of a magenta looking line that goes to other spawns. That spawn just doesn't happen to cross with this one. Um, I may have to add a line to include that, but for now I'm not going to. But that yellow line now unifies these two places, so if they decide they would prefer to take the train rather than take the road, by all means, Captain, please do that. I'm, I'm all for it. That's exactly what it's designed for. Now, let's just do it. Let's just, come on, just do it. There it is. It's right there. Do it. This side, we're doing it. Done. That's it. That's it, and it's perfect. People will have to cross this street, but that's a good um, excuse for a future bus line. Just as this side over here will have a bus line. Once this expands a little bit, I do I do plan on taking these layouts out to probably three or four times their size uh, before suburban sprawl. I say suburban sprawl. Check out the last video to see what suburban sprawl looks like in this situation. It's really not bad. It's really like houses in the woods more so. Um, probably similar for this area, but this hits all the beats that I wanted to. We've, we've started with bridges. This is expandable. We have connections and things. Uh, the, the road hierarchy is intact as we've not put too many connections on this main through road or the main access between these two places by road. Happy with that. It also has a train connection and a good chance of future bus connectivity as well. Plus the walkable grids that I promised walkable, small grids. Small grids make for a lot of road and less buildings, but that also reduces the density of an area. So it kind of has a, a bunch of emergent effects that I really like. Uh, plus a lot of potential for parks. I imagine this could be a park and this could be a park. This is a monument, um, as well as industry on this side of the river and this side of the river. So that ticks all of the boxes that I intended to. Thank you so much for checking out how I handle constructing an interesting and hopefully realistic road layout in city skylines. I hope you found this enlightening or inspiring or helpful in some way. That's really the aim of this channel is to learn things and teach things and have a conversation, have some feedback surrounding the game of city skylines and sometimes urbanism at large as well. Uh, definitely feel free to subscribe here as I continue building on the map Little River. Certainly we still have to add buildings to Jefferson, so come back and see how that ends up being sort of zoned in or plopped. Either way, I also stream twice a week over on Twitch. Feel free to follow over there. And we have a Discord community, so feel free to come have a conversation in the meantime. That's all I've got for today. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.